Welcome to the Dynasty YT, this is your King Shay speaking. Welcome back to another episode of In The Mind, um, another team fight breakdown. This time we're going to be playing Gragas in the jungle, super OP, as long as probably with uh, Rek'Sai and Nunu, and then obviously Sejuani, but he's, she is permaban. So, we're going to be playing Gragas in the jungle. We are pretty much far ahead in this at this point, we're about 7k ahead, really, really good shape. But the thing is that a lot of our damage comes from Katarina. She's actually doing really well against this team, which is basically a full counter to Katarina. Katarina first picked, and they have an Amumu, Lissandra, and Garen, Jan, all to stop her. But, fortunately, we, we play out these team fights really, really well, and we're able to uh, successfully win these team fights. So, in this game, uh, as you can see at this in, in this team fight, we single out to the Mumu, and we're able to kill him really, really quickly, and then we can move on to their back line. Right? Janet goes down, I ignore the Garen, and then just zone out these two from from uh, the rest of the team fight. Jinx goes down to the uh, Thorn Mail, and then fortunately, unfortunately, sorry, I end up dying to the Ignite. So let's go back and watch that in slow motion. Slow motion for ya. Slow motion for ya, all right. So, as you can see, right here, pause it. I pop, I, I, I pop my glory, because I, I see that Jinx is really far ahead right here. If I use my E, e to hit her, and then combo her back with my ult, then she can instantly die. But right here, she knows she notices the threat and then immediately flashes out. Now we see that Amumu probably wanted to make sure that didn't happen. He flashes or she flashes out, but Amumu goes in and uses the ult. It's a it's a terrible ult. Terrible in the sense that there's no follow-up in this situation, right? And it's a good ult in terms of catching our backline, right? Both our carries are caught in this ultimate. But the thing is. If they're caught, but there's no follow-up, then it's not good ult at all. He ends up dying. Um, Katarina uses her QSS or for no reason. And now, because that Jinx is out of the question, and Amumu already ulted, I can actually use my ult to single him out and bring him back into the team fight. Fortunately, Janna actually uses her ult trying to uh, help Amumu out and try to disengage. But I end up ulting, stopping the Amumu, stopping the Janna ult, so that's a huge disengage gone. And then, and then now Mumu comes back into our team, and we end up blowing up him. Even though he's the tank, we use a ton of CCs, right? Katarina uses her, her, her ult, right? I use my ult, and then um, uh, Lucian already used his ult. So that's actually a lot of ults used onto the tank. But the thing is, he, he, is, a, he is a threat because he does a, quite a bit of passive damage, and also his ult is ri ridiculously good. But now that he's out of the question, now we can move on to the, to the team, to the back line. Right, um, Morgana does a really nice job of using her ult and then making Lissandra flash out of the team fight. So now we can focus onto the Janna, and then she ends up going down really easy to be able to get a Katarina reset. For unfortunately, she gets silenced and dies right here. So, right here as Gragas, I have two options. I could either <coughs> help peel away the Gra the Garen for my backline, but the thing is, there's already four people here to be able to. T take care of Garen and he's pretty much dead so instead I focus on uh, peeling or not peeling zoning away their back line so Garen does get her get does get Katarina but then Garen goes down and I'm able to zone out these two cha these two champions right Lissandra hasn't used her ult yet and then Jinx hasn't used her ult yet because she's because these two are always zoned out of the team fight so now she ends up dying to my thorn mail and I do massive damage to the Lissandra before going down myself to Ignite. If it weren't for the Ignite, I would be able to live there. So that's a situation where we use a lot of cooldowns onto the to the onto the front line and making sure that he ends up actually dying quickly enough to the point where their backline can't can't respond to anything, right? So a lot of misconception is 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 a lot of Trying to use all your cooldowns onto the back line, when in reality, if you can single out and catch someone out, that fight instantly becomes a 5v4 in your favor, and then it could be really, really advantageous. But obviously, it's there's different kind of situations where using too many cooldowns in one champion is a bad thing. Let's say we use those exact same cooldowns onto Janna. Well, it might not be that good of a thing because what happens a Mooma comes in, ults all five of her players, and then the rest of the team can clean up. So you gotta remember, you gotta recognize where the threats are what can possibly be the outcome of the of picking someone off and is it advantageous for you now i want to go over what it looks like to have a terrible team fight i'll let you guys watch this out first Okay. 
Now, let's go over let's go over the team comps first, right? Um, we're only we're only two KPI, so the money the the power of each team is pretty much equal. Um, they do have a longer range with the Jinx and the uh, Lux, but we have a lot of sustained damage. They have a lot of burst with the Riven and Lux, and we have a lot of sustained damage with the Vlad, the Victor, and the Kog'Maw. Uh, at, if you didn't know, I was playing Victor right now. So we see right here, Maokai. He pops his glory, he pops his ult, and he's getting ready to go in. I was expecting him to maybe go on to the go on to the Nunu, and we're able to DPS him down. Because let's be honest, our DPS is a lot faster than their DPS. So we would be able to kill Nunu before they'd be able to kill Maokai. But instead, he completely runs past Nunu, goes right to right to um, Jinx. And it's just, this is actually really hard because look, Nunu can zone our whole team with just his ult. Um, and then they, we, st they st we still have to worry about a Riven flashing onto our backline. So he goes in right away. And notice when he pops his ult. This ult, he has about six seconds left of his ult. And he and he gets and he ults and he gets gets rid of it like you're dead. He did no damage with it. Like it's a twenty percent damage reduction. That is huge. You need to have that up for the whole ten seconds. But as you can see, he goes onto the Jinx, and I guess it's an okay catch, right? You know, Janna tries to speed up our whole team to be able to go, uh, get to Jinx. But look at this Nunu ult. It is perfect. It zones our whole team. So now we have to back up away from what. Maokai went in, right? You see Riven go in, flash right onto me. And I instantly die. So that's a threat gone, right? Janna tries to save my life by exhausting. She doesn't ult fast enough. And um, Riven ends up just destroying our backline. So Janna ults way too late. Actually ults him closer to Kog'Maw. Misses, his tor misses her tornado. And then really does a terrible job of peeling. So this whole team fight was absolutely garbage. It was a combination of Maokai doing a terrible job in engaging. Nunu does an amazing job of of disengaging, right? Peeling for his team with the, just the one ult. Um, and Riven going in, my bad positioning, and Janna just doing a terrible job of trying to peel. So hopefully guys, you guys learned something today. Remember, it's not always about going for their back line. Sometimes going for, focusing the front line first is a better thing. So, remember, uh, remember the links will always be in the description for my videos. Go check those out. Uh, thank you guys for coming to Dynasty. Remember to leave a like, comment about this video if you liked it or not. If you guys learned anything, that would be awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming to Dynasty. See you guys next time. Bye.